One. Higgins, I'm sure, will feel he needs to counter-attack here. And just try and reduce that confidence that Mathlin clearly has been feeling this morning. Make him dwell on an error. But that's the beauty of Championship Snooker. You've got the game itself, which is hard enough. You've got all the mind games as well in the background. The psychology, which makes it such Eight. a fascinating watch. Yeah, another sizable break for Selby. So he's put together three good frames there to lead 3-1 at the interval. Nine. Sixteen. Seventeen. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he knows he's got to make a counter-attack here, but if he could come out of this session at two all, he kind of still 24. there hanging on, knowing that he's got an opportunity to get some frames under his belt. But if he lost this one and fell further behind, then he really, I think, would start to feel uncomfortable out there. Twenty-five. Thirty-two. Well, I'll make this the fifth black coming up. Yes, should have been a one four seven last night, shouldn't they? On, on this very side of the table with uh, Steve McGuire. Looked, I thought he was. At one point, looked like he really would, was going to make one. Well, Kurt Mafflin, of course, uh, had a chance in the first round. Ended on 105. I wonder if he's got any interest in continuing on the black here. I think he, if he runs this red through, we know. He's got a choice of playing with that or another one. I mean, I, I never understand with breaks, you know, you always say it wins one frame and you've got to look at the match context, but if the break prize is high, and we've had some huge break prizes here, then really maybe the answer is to go for them if the chance is on rather than win the frame. Fifty-five thousand in total, forty thousand for the maximum, fifteen for the high break, that's the prize. It's a lot of money just to say, well, I'd rather just be sure win the frame, isn't it? Let's be honest. Well, he's had nine maximums, Higgins, never won at the Crucible. There's very few things he's never done in the game, but this would be the first for him. Yeah, he's played that nicely, Dave. 49. Well, Crucible maximums have been a rarity in recent years, haven't they? 2012. When I mean, you think the man who made it, Stephen Hendry, has been retired for since then, basically, all those years. No one's got near. We've only ever had ten, and they've been made by six different players. Uh, that's uh, not a good shot. Not a good shot at all. Be furious, actually, to hit that red on the way through. It wasn't, for him, 56. that difficult looking a shot. Well, I suppose he could pop the red up and play back on the black, but he'd be enraged to finish there. But now maybe the, the winning of the frame comes right back into the equation is the most important thing. Mm, if you could pop this red in the middle, I think it'd be hitting on the black. Well, I get the 
feeling he's he's not entirely given up the ghost here of getting a, if he's playing this red he must have a chance if it goes in of getting on the black it doesn't look a natural but as you can see the red goes what will happen to the cue ball well we soon find out if the red's going in we're right behind the line Fifty-seven. Wow. Wow. All of a sudden, in some ways, that bad shot, Dave, has helped him because the Reds are even better spread now than they would have been had he got on that red initially. Yeah, this is a definite chance for John Higgins to add his name to that roll of honour, maximum break makers at the Crucible. Sixty-four. Sixty-five. Just looking at the two reds below and to the left of the pink. They're not as easy to get on as you might think they are. But once he pots one of them, the other one is, of course, Exposed, so that'll be a, a test, perhaps. And you, you often find that players play on to reds into the middle pockets more in these circumstances, because then getting back for the black is fairly easy. I think John recognises that this is a proper chance. He's played on that red to the middle, goodness me. And that would be one of the more difficult reds. This was a shot which 72. brought everything back into the open. Seventy-three. Well, the frame is safe. That's the first thing which you always want to happen under these circumstances. I might play through the gap between the two reds here. Yeah, that's exactly what he's played. It's absolutely perfectly Hate judged. He, oh. uh, come on, Ben, concentrate. This is quite important. Hate it. Ben Williams, the referee, forgot to take the black out. The match is on the interval, so it's not the, the case that they stop playing. Remember Bill Werbenek peeking round and Cliff Thorburn made the first maximum here in 1983. 81. Well, surely the reason they, they stopped playing is because of the crowd possibly getting in the way, isn't it? Anyway, like you say, it's not relevant here. Now, the, the only th thing I would say, Dave, is that the Reds are kind of blocking each other off a little bit. It's, you've got to get top side of a red oh, that's okay that's fine that's a perfect way to play it as I say he's made nine maximums the most recent was at the 2018 Scottish Open in his native Glasgow 89 top side of the next red of course He may have played a little cannon there, knowing that... 96. If he freed the red, it would be even better. I don't think he's delighted with the last shot. I'll go twice across, I think. Doesn't want to be straight. 97. He might have to play a red to the middle if he is. I think that's the case. And then, of course, it is the one way he's assured of having a shot at the red. 
has just scored a shot as they read into the opposite middle earlier in the break this. Oh, he's got it, Dave. 105. Brilliant. What a chance now. Yeah, this is uh, another excellent pod under pressure to keep the break going. And again, you saw the extra he put into the shot just to ensure that he was above it, above the red. 112. Which means getting onto the black is, is very much achievable. Next objective. An angle on the black to get on the yellow is absolutely essential here. Yeah, a couple of key shots coming up for sure. John Higgins, one of the great pressure players in snooker history. The pink is not on its spot because it never will be. When you think about it, it's never been potted, but it's so close to it. Usually the pink can be an issue later in a 147 attempt because it can be on a side cushion or near that. But it's absolutely perfect from black to yellow here. Screw up one cushion. Wow, this is uh, this is serious stuff. 120. He never made a maximum, you know, even in practice until after he won his first world title. Remember, he made his first at the Nations Cup in Reading. 122. But if you make one at the Crucible, it's a desert island frame. It's one you never forget. Five balls to go. 125. Just a nice little angle in behind the blue. Just off straight, perhaps. Well, he hasn't got to use a cushion to get from blue to pink. 129. Oh, that is a delight. That's just where you want to be. One hundred and thirty four. Eight years it's been since Stephen Hendry made the last maximum here at the Crucible. His compatriot is two balls away. Looks like you're gonna play the run through of one cushion. One hundred and forty. A little bit further away from the black than he would like, but this is the one. What a moment. 147. John Higgins makes the 11th Crucible Maximum. Cool as you like. A remarkable break by a truly remarkable champion. And look at that smile. That break, if no one equals it, is worth £55,000. A moment of history for John Higgins.